Well, uh, you see, there's a lot of intricate mirrors to the road. Hi, I'm uh, Dylan Ferguson, and you're listening to the Business Partners Podcast. Wait a minute. Who, who, who are you and what are you doing in my house? Patrick's not here today, so I'm filling in for him. That's right, we have a special guest, Fiona. Our very first hashtag friend of the show. Uh, how's, it, how's it going? It's going good. I'm very happy to be here. That's good. Someone has to be. Anyways, yeah, so um, <laughs> for those who didn't watch the recent vlog... A, what the hell are you doing? And B, we have just uh, graduated from our program. Woot, woot. So yeah. Exciting. Yeah, so with the grad, like, kind of kind of give me a rundown on, like, how you thought about it, you know? I found it interesting. You know, I've never graduated. Well, that's not true. I graduated. I never graduated. It was very intense. How did I get here? What are you doing? <laughs> well, it's very different from my high school graduation. Mainly because it was more than five people. Oh, okay. I I didn't expect it to be so, like, standy uppy. If told. Oh, yeah. It was a sure lot of, like, well, you walk down here, and then you wait in line, and then you get your gown, and then you wait in line, and then you stand up for a million years, and then you exactly. walk down a corridor, then you walk outside, then you stand there, and you lift the slips up, you sit down, then you get up, you wait in line, then you get your degree, yeah. and then you're done. Basically. You wait in the line again. Well, the thing is, we're, we should be used to the, you know, just stop and start and stop and start, you know? But that was an absolute <laughs> sauna. Like, it was pouring in there. Like, it doesn't help that, like... I made the dumb decision of being like, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear my suit. So I'm just going to burn to death even more. But it's commitment to the fit, right? Also, like, it's a yeah. hockey arena. It's supposed to be cold. Why didn't they just put on the really crazy air conditioning that all hockey arenas have? That's what I thought. I was like, hey, wait. I was really hoping that, like, the ice would still be on there. <laughs> and I could just, like, <laughs> just full on Frozone, just skate right up to get my diploma. <laughs> I wish that was the case. Speaking of, like, um, speaking of, um, like, um, walk out to get your diploma, did you see Wynn's, like, walk to the Well, the thing is, was that she went right after me, so I couldn't, well, I could've, but I, I didn't want to, but, yeah. Because I was kind of busy, you know, just doing my typical rocker, just like, <laughs> And then I see the vlog, and I was like, what? It's on brand. On it's brand. very on brand. It was just funny. Yeah. See, with my, for me, it's a little weird because my last graduation was actually here on campus because I graduated from Maribel. We had ours in the theater over there. Oh, what? And a funny story about it. <laughs> So there was a there was another guy in my year. His name was Delroy Ferguson. So they give him his diploma, supposedly. And then I give my card to the guy who's reading it. And he's like, Dylan Ferguson? And I was like, yes. And then I go up, and then he calls. And then I go up to the principal, who... Back to the names, but you know who you are. I despise you with all of my being. Anyways, so I go up, shake hands with her, and she's like, switch your diploma with him. And I'm like, what? And I walk over, stand next to him, because they're doing like five at a time. They all get off stage after. And I look down, and he has mine, and I have his. So it's just like, if if something bad had to happen, it would happen to me, because, well, yeah. So we, we exchange them on stage, and everyone's just dying of laughter. And I was just like, yeah, this would fucking happen. That's, in my graduation, I was the only girl, and it was me and five other guys. Really? Yeah. Well, because I went to a private school in Lansdowne because my parents didn't, well, my parents didn't want me to go to public school because they were scared I was going to get beat up. Oh. So I went to a private school in Lansdowne. And um, because no one really wants to go there, <laughs> especially if you're an artist, because they don't have a lot of art programs there. Okay, okay. But 
because no one really wants to go there. Like, yeah. my, like my class in grade seven started out with 50. And then it dropped down to six by the time I was in grade 12. Oh, thank God. No one except for me and one other guy that I'd known since the beginning mm -hmm. were, like, from the original 50. Uh, the other people either graduated cool. or left. So it was me and then five other guys, most of whom, like, transferred, like, the year before. Oh, okay. Or, like, that year. So, like... Yeah, it was so if, like I have the photos and if you look at them, it's just these five guys just sitting there and then on the corner you have me in like this blue red iridescent dress and such a party and this giant hat. Wait, so I, like that is so like how long did that ceremony take? Uh not that long. Well the thing is is like because I think because we were so little, we had to write our own little speeches. So I got to stand up there and do my own graduation speech. And also another thing is like it was in like like the OMS like we graduate because it was like COVID. We were just coming off of COVID. And also I, I fought tooth and nail to get like more people to come because I had people that wanted to go. Right. Um, but we had it outside in the sweltering heat. It wasn't as bad as the year before, but it was sweltering heat. And like, I don't know, like it, it was on grass. So, like, I actually almost fell over trying to get my diploma. Oh, my God. I was, like, walking. I'm like, Shh. I see. I can just imagine how painful that would be. It's just, like, you know, you take a step, heel digs into the yeah. mass, just fall, like, straight back over. Just, like, you know, just climactic music. Just, like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a bit funny. That I can already picture the edits of that like that'd be <laughs> if Patrick was had known me before was at my graduation he would have killed it <laughs> oh absolutely that would be like a recurring thing I hope that's a recurring joke yeah <laughs> because the thing is for the past vlog I I really wanted to do something you know comedic but the thing was I was so tired yeah. From the previous night, because I went to bed at like three in the morning, as oh. as I usually do. But and I was planning this whole thing out, and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna have a recurring gag where I walk into doors, do something like that. But I could, I didn't really, and also because my dad would be like, Dylan, what are you doing? Are you drunk again? Yeah, exactly. It's just like, no, you see. And I'd have to explain to him the intricacies of the vlog. It's just like, okay, so here's the lore of the vlog. There's there's a segment where I get cut off every like every five seconds into it, and it would be sad explaining that. The lore, the vlog lore. Well, uh, you see, there's a lot of intricate mirrors to the road. And first off, there is the door. <laughs> it's, I, what's really funny is speaking of the vlog you know what's funny is that that started off as just parroting Danny's vlog and it just became because Danny stopped it just, it just became Patrick's thing and it, what's funny is when I, when he first did it like the first person you see other than him is me he's like oh. what is your what da what's your favorite day field and I'm not knowing I was like Friday. He's like, no, it's a block today. And I was like, oh. I, I don't know. I mean, that's just, that's a great opinion. It's just like, what's your favorite day? Friday. Friday. Yeah. Because I, because like, and also, also, it's, it's funny watching it back because like, it's like, you made your debut in the first vlog as well. Because the <laughs> yeah. first vlog was the day we all got our headshots. Well, Patrick didn't ever get his, but when we all collectively did our headshots. And that was a fun day. I, I just remember, like, because on the graduation day when I was getting ready, I was re I was marathoning the vlog. Okay. Just to remember. And I remember seeing you for the first time. It's just that fucking... <laughs> just like... You can't see what I'm doing, but it's really, it's really funny. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a, I remember that whole day. We were just like, 
I think that's the first time where I really talked to like a lot. Of people. Yeah. Well, we didn't do anything that day. We yeah. sat in a room. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Wind played Christmas music on a loudspeaker. I so we all just in. collectively yeah. went insane. I remember just all of us just singing Feliz Navidad. Yeah. That, that was oh, that was great. Yeah, that was that wonderful. Actually, speaking of like. First thing, do you remember how we met? Like, the first time we actually collectively, like, you and I, like, spoke to each other? Uh, I don't think I do, actually. I wanted to bring this up because it's adorable. Because I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. I cherish that memory. So, I was, it was you, me, Wind, Folk, and another human whom we both have had association. You know, we're not in a name. Um... And we were all, like, when would get, like, these donuts at, like, a donut cart? So we all just collectively went over. I remember this. And we were we were waiting for the donuts. <laughs> I was bored. So I started singing Edge of Dawn from Fireman 3. Six and you joined in. Yeah. And I was like, you know what that is? Yeah, I was like, oh, my God. Someone who actually understands my nerdy-ass enjoyments. You you want to know about my theory? Let's do it. And yeah, see the thing is, there's not a lot of stuff I can geek out on, but that at that moment I was just like, oh my god, no way, someone who actually gets it. And then like it was just, well that sounded edgy. She was like, you know, someone understood before like said to me. No, <laughs> it was. It was really funny, and then we just, for the rest of that entire day, we just talked about, like, what routes we hate, or what routes we like, and the characters. That was fun. That was awesome. That was a very enjoyable time. That was great. Transition stick. Transition stick. Yeah, so I guess we kind of, well, we've basically kind of just gone into it anyways, but, like, you know, like, any thoughts on the program and, like, you know, fun memories and whatnot? I think it, it, I, I, um, I was, when I went into college, I was very skeptical because, um, by the end of high school, I had become incredibly, like, bitchy and ornery because I, because, okay. like, most of my friends had left yeah. and, um, I didn't really have much, like, motivation because, like, you know, you go through, like, 12 years of doing something, and then you have to stop doing that. It's it's yeah. weird. So, like, I went into the program being really bitchy. You didn't, thankfully, you didn't have to hear my, in my, like, you know, we had to introduce ourselves. Mine was, hi, my name's Fiona, and I didn't go to Concordia, so I guess I'm here. And my goal is, like, <laughs> like, I did, I was so like bitchy and ornery and like nihilistic and like thankfully i'm like i became less nihilistic that's good because like, it was funny because at the end of it all chris was like so fiona you know i remember when you came in you're like well i wasn't blah blah blah, blah. how do you feel about that now i'm like Oh, well, I'm happy I'm here because this was probably way better than Concordia. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I remember that first day was just, <laughs> frankly, it was torture because I am. In case you haven't noticed, and this this may come as a shock based on the fact that I don't shut the fuck up most of the time. Same. I am so goddamn introverted. Like it hurts. So. I remember that first day, or that first week, rather, I was, like, by myself, just brooding in the corner. So was I. Yeah. Dude, Ben, we're edgy. <laughs> we're, we're, we're cool. We're not like the others. Yeah. But I think, like, later on, it was just like, okay, these people are cool. And I am slowly becoming less edgy. Yeah, it's like what I did. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so we basically just had the same character development path. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just in different groups, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that we never got to be in the same group. That makes For me... real, yeah. Uh, because I remember, not to be disrespectful in my program, but I did sometimes sit there and be like, well, if I could swap out this person with that, there is. You too? You too? 
there's a lot of times where I was just like, okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to trade this person. It's like hockey team. Exactly. We're like trading our yeah, people. It's just like, okay, so this person is worth two of these people. So we're going to trade these people, switch it around, and then bam, that's it. Yeah. Not naming names, but we... No, not naming names. We know we know who we would have... They, actually, that's one thing is, thankfully, anyone who, like, kind of gave the program problems ended up, like, leaving, like, after the first semester, which is yes, for sure. Not to be mean, but that was kind of helpful because, like, even though, like, second semester was, like, really chaotic and no one knew what was going on, yeah. at least they didn't have to deal with as many, like, yeah. like people. There was still a, like, drama, but, like, oh yeah, it wasn't, like, situated around the same collective yeah, the ju- like the like it really separated the wheat from the chaff at the it end. It did, which, which is good. I mean, yeah, but overall, this was definitely. But I have a lot of fond memories. Yeah, I remember. Um, wait, hold on. Do I remember? <laughs> I remember. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> I remember the. Do I remember the, the 21st night of September? September? Well, I, I was probably, you know, bad. Uh, oh, was this in the time when everyone was really high? No, that was. I think that was in October, probably. That was very much in October. I remember that day. I. That was an interesting day. Let's see. What was. What was the 21st night of September? <laughs> Ember. That was a Wednesday. Are you calling the time? Yes. So let's see what. Nothing happened on the twenty first. Well, nothing significant enough to throw on my calendar. So someone probably remembers the twenty first night of September this year. I mean, I don't know. Every day, every twenty first of September, I make sure to remind myself of that. I'll mark it off on my calendar. <laughs> And then whenever it gets to the 21st, I'm like, what? oh, yeah, it's all going together. Now, the bigger question is, do you wake up when September ends? I do wake up when September ends. But, de- but I'll, you know, I have to, someone has to wake me up before yeah. I go, go, you know? You know what I'm saying? Well, you can't be hanging on like a yo-yo. <laughs> nice. To move the rain stick to this point. Hold on, I could, like... There we go. I don't have to move it all the time. You don't have to hear, like, the, the trickling effect. This is... Like... This is cool. It's interesting, you know? Yeah. For anyone who... Like, I'm sure you guys know Patrick has, a like, a rain stick. Yes. We're just kind of admiring... It's right. We're admiring Patrick's stick. Well, I do that on many occasions. <laughs> it's like just just look look at the intricacies. You know, well, there's these little like oh uh, like like little like nuggets of wood. It's like a beautiful. I thought I thought you were gonna say nuggets of wisdom. <laughs> okay. It's just like oh yes, the the many intricacies and wisdomnesses of the wood. <laughs> mm-hmm. The wood wisdom. You know what? I just remembered a great memory. What? So, um, for a little bit of background for those who don't know, we had a music uh, introduction to music basics. Oh, yes. Where we, you know, talked about, you know, musical instruments and stuff like that. Oh, yes. And there was one presentation that I did with uh, with a few uh, camaraderies. Yes, I remember. As that... You see, I have a lot of weird present. I've had a lot of weird presentations in my day, but I think that was the one where I was the most unhinged. Very much so. I think it was in. It might have been in this in vlog sixteen. Yeah, it's the entire presentation is in yeah. the vlog. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so I remember. I my goal was to be entertaining. It was very entertaining. That's that's good. I did something right. Because as long as, the way I see it, the worst thing a presentation can be is boring. Oh, I know. Because it, 
If no one's paying attention, you're not learning anything from it. Holy fuck, that was really cool. <laughs> I killed a fly. Dylan just, like, Mr. Miyagi to fly with his hand. That was insane. Okay. Anyway, back to Sorry, school. side tangent. I was woken up 6.30 this morning by a random fly in my room. Ew, no. And I spent about a good 30 minutes trying to hunt it. Oh my god, you're like me. I'm the designated fly killer in my house. The thing is, is my, my parents got smart. So we had these two electric fly swatters. So whenever I, there's a fly in the house, you'll just see me running around and these two fly swatters like, get that cute motherfucker. Like, I swear the flies and then I kill them. I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you fuck. Sorry, that reminds me of another, uh, another fun side tangent story. So, one Halloween, there was, there's always this haunted house in my neighborhood. And I remember I ruined it for me and my friends forever. Mm. Because I forget, I was dressed up as Ike from Fire Emblem. Nice. And I remember, so I had my sword and everything, right? <laughs> and so, I walk in, and this person in a mask, like, charges at us. And I hold up the sword at them, and they're like, Hey, that's dangerous. You can't do that. And I was just thinking, like, it's styrofoam. It's no well, actually, it was wooden. Okay. But I was just like, you ruined the magic, man. <laughs> Damn it. Now, now I can't be scared. How am I supposed to live up my Fire Emblem fantasy fighting off all the mortal savants and grimoires if you're just like, kind of playing in the ass? Just do what you want. Get your head in the game. I am trying to kill you to look. Oh, God. It's like the time I went to a haunted house and I accidentally kicked one of the people in the head because they grabbed my leg. I'm sorry. So, and then, not to dox myself, but I went to the um, Governor General's residence because they would put to a haunted house in the souvenir shop. All right. And I was walking through and they had a guy under a table who would like jump out and grab your leg. And I got so scared that I like shook my leg. I'm like, do to the guy in the head. And then I just, I just booked it out. Cause I was like, I, that's not, it, I mean, you, that's just kind of weird. And it also feels like a charge just waiting to happen. You know, it's just like, really going through like, oh, fuck you. And then you just like, I wonder if that dude has like a, I wonder if that dude has like a concussion or something. Or like a star from some like eight year old. That's the thing with Saunders Farm. At least they don't touch you, so you can't, like... Exactly. Like, I've only been to Saunders once. That was a fun time. It's really fun. I've gone, oh, like, twice. The thing is, though, because I'm a dickhead, I like, oh. I like to just say stupid shit, because the actors will come up to me and be like, Rah! and I'll be like, yo, you know where there's a Wendy's? <laughs> I'm trying to get a bacon eater. Are we the same person? Because I, <laughs> on Count Nisicate, well, I remember the one time I went, I was just shouting absolute nonsense. <laughs> That's what I do. My friend and I are on the hayride, and, like, the guy with the chainsaw's chasing us, and we're like, do you have any sashimi? <laughs> and, like, just that, we're just yeah. probably ruining it for all of <laughs> by being stupid. You see, like, I... The best, one of the most fun things ever is just, like, you see a random person, and you just try to, like, weird them out. I remember one time, I was at the dorm here. Oh, joy. Yeah, and there, I was, uh, you know, just hanging around, and there was one guy, and I was, and I, he was walking by, and I was like, did you know that I once bought lettuce off of a man with no limbs? It, a poor guy, like, English wasn't his first language. So he was just like, what? And I was just like, yeah, I, I once bought lettuce off of a guy with, with no lips. And he was so confused to the point where I just felt bad. And I was like, I'm just pulling your leg. You can go now. And he was just like, oh, okay. And that was, that was the one time I've ever felt bad about doing that. But I had another incident on, a, well, two incidents in one night. Don't joy. I'm a hater of children. Same. So, I'm uh, I'm on the O train with the uh, with a few people. Famous last words. 
Uh huh. Yeah. So the, there's these two obnoxious little kids, right? And they're just running around the train. And I'm looking at them very judgmentally because what else do I do? And one of them looks back at me. And both of them turn to me and they're just like, Are you going to punch my friend? And I give him like this little grin. And it's just like, Maybe. Oh, no. If you want proof, ask Logan. Ask Logan. He can, like, ask Logan and Gabby. They can confirm that I have, in fact, done that. And they kind of just, like, like, one of them was just like, damn, okay. And then kind of just scampers off. But later that night, there's another instance where, um, there's this one kid, right? Mm-hmm. He's being an obnoxious shit disturber. Mm-hmm. And, you know, listening to some Foo Fighters, as one does. This kid sits next to me, like right next to me on the bus, which is like, ew, gross, get away from me. There was even a stain on that seat because it's OC Transpo. <laughs> and this kid is just like, excuse me, do you know if the, if the 96 is still running? And I was like, I don't know. And he was just like, could you check? And I literally turned to him. I say, I don't feel like it. And then I put my AirPod back in. And I hear him just about to go like, what do you mean by that? And I just put it back in. And the opening guitar riff for everyone continues. And I was, and that, in that moment, I was just like, I am so fucking cool. Bit. You went. One time when I was, this is recently, I was on the bus, like, I was, I don't remember where I was going, but I was on the bus. And I, it was like, Recently, because school had just gone out, like the De La Salle people were graduating. Okay. And I say that because I was on the, the six. And that's where all the De La Salle kids were getting on the bus. And there are these two girls sitting behind me. And oh my God. Like, there's an unspoken rule on OC Transpo. Yeah. Is yeah. that when you're talking, you don't talk really loud. I know it's a public bus, but yeah. it, like, for most of my life, I've taken the bus. And there is the unspoken rule of just. Lower your voice, because like, yeah. not everyone wants to listen. But these two were like, like they were talking really loud about stuff. And I'm just sitting there. I didn't have my headphones that day for some reason. So I'm sitting there listening to this conversation. I'm like, you could you could have this conversation at a lower decibel if you are right now. Like, why? Why? Like, I get, like, yeah. they're probably, like, ninth graders. But, like, probably. Also, now that I'm out of high school, listening to, like, younger kids talk about high school, I'm like, what? Oh, oh, God. You guys are taking this way too seriously. Like, sure, I took it seriously, but I know now not to take it seriously. Like, it's, it's, it, it, like, it's not as crazy as you're thinking. It's really not. I remember when I was still at my old work, and there was a few people there that were younger than me, of course, and... They, they all went to the same high school as me, and this was just at the start of this school year. Mm. And they were they were complaining. It was just like, ah, oh, you know, it's, it, like, it's great and all, but two of our friends, they keep making out everywhere. And I, and I was like, excuse me? Yes. And they were just, they kept complaining about that. And I, and I was just thinking to myself, see, my friends were never like this, you know? In high school, my friends were... Oof, we were characters. <laughs> Hardly know her, of course. But that was... In high school, I always made it my goal to be as weird as possible. Right? And I remember one time, I was kind of just having a little bit of a freak out. Oh, joy. Yeah. And my friends were like... Apparently, I was in a perfect position one time, and they were just... They took a picture of me and photoshopped it. Onto the album cover of Dial Lit. Oh. And that, I don't have that picture anymore. It's, it sucked, but I was just like, you guys are fucking hilarious. When I was in high school, I mainly um, hung out with like one person because I did have like a group of friends, but then like half of them left and then like go. the other half of them like were older than me. So they were kind of like, distancing themselves from me okay. because it's like well we don't need to hang out with you anymore because like fuck you but right like yeah. i hung out with like this one person who's my best friend of like seven years now yeah, okay it's funny because they they hated me because <laughs> i was in college i was annoying as fuck and they were like 
Like, they were, like, maximum edginess teenager. Like, I think of a cloud death. <laughs> And Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> like, that's a That's a, re- a real cornerstone yeah. of edginess. And she's like, I watch Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Um, but anyway, I guess they kind of just succumbed to my bullshit and we became friends. Is it basically just Stockholm Syndrome at that point? Don't know. I, I've asked them, like, hey, to me, like, what changed? And they're like, I don't know, I just stopped getting tired of your shit. And I'm like, okay. So, like, for, like, from grade 9 all the way to, like, I'll say grade 12, they did transfer out, like, in grade 11, but we still kept in contact. Okay, that's good. And it was just us doing, like, the stupidest shit. Oh, yeah? Like, we were always together. Mm -hmm. We were always, like, like, spewing, like, the stupid, like, stupid shit. For some reason, we had to do a project on a man called... De police. Um, I don't remember his first name, but his last name was De Police. And then, literally, any time we saw a cop car go by when we were in school or we were out on a field trip, mm-hmm. she and I would just go, "Oh my God, it's the police!" Oh my God! Oh my God! Well, you see, usually whenever I see the cops, you know, and I'm not, I said dogs myself, but I usually just like, "Oh shit, uh, they're gonna catch me!" <laughs> uh, for what? Uh, you don't know. Uh, 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 I am wanted in several states. Uh, yeah, so... Um, let's just say I'm uh, not allowed to vote in, uh, in Wyoming. I'm not going to elaborate. Well, at least it's in a flyover state that no one cares about. Yeah. Do you ever just look at... And if you live out here, this isn't any slander or anything. But at the same time, it is. But not against you. But you just think, like, okay. Do people live in, like, places other than, like, the Northeast and, like, California and Texas and Florida? Yeah, because it's like, I've never heard, I've never seen a singular, uh, well, no, as people live in Rhode Island. I know that, um, I think. And maybe old people, too. Dude, come on. Everyone knows that. Rhode Island isn't real. It's just where, you know, they make family guy. Like, Rhode Island isn't real. It's just, you know. It's just the set of family guy. Exactly. Yeah, it's just like. You just drive in there and just it's like a dirty cartoon. You just hear Lois sing the family guy. It's just like, you go in and the only thing is just, you hear is just, I better, I better, I better. You turn on the radio, it's Amos today. That's just that on repeat. Oh my God. It's just like you go into Rhode Island and suddenly you're just voiced by Seth MacFarlane. And it's just like, hey, Peter. That sounds like my own personal L. <laughs> I have been to, I have been to Minnesota. I, like, I was that like, I've been, okay, I should rephrase. I got stuck in Minnesota <laughs> on the way home from California. So we were flying from, for, from like a Christmas vacation with my family in California. Right. And... I think my uncle's travel agent fucked up because we got stuck in Minnesota three, three days in, in fucking freezing cold Minnesota. And we're like, first off, we went, we, we, we went to this like four points hotel, like the, and it was shit. It was horrible. Like we had to stand in line outside in the freezing cold and the door kept like opening and shutting. So, like, the cold was coming in. We couldn't get any food. Really? And I was, like, a child at that point. So, like, not being able to get food for your child. It's not. That's right. Great. That's rough. So, I mean, we decided to just th- sleep through the night, try and, like, go to bed. But then we kept getting awoken by a phone say, like, saying that, like, oh, you ordered a wake-up call. And it's like, no, we didn't. We did not. So, like, that was our first night in Minnesota, and it was shit. But the second night, for me, that was prime of like childhood because we went to this best western okay and like it was a pretty okay hotel room it was like on the ground floor i got to watch like um i got to watch pbs kids which was really great because we didn't have pbs kids like on cable back in my house so right but there was a pool and i as a child love like pools and beaches and this pool was like 
a kid's like dream like 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 it had like a whole water park it had like like a like these like water slides there was one that was like in the shape of like a like a pirate shipwreck it was like so it was so cool i spent three hours my parents have like confirm this because they were there i spent three hours in that pool just just like playing which was nice because after the horrible four points incident it was nice for them to be able to let their child have some happiness in old dark minnesota and also the reason we were stuck there was because delta airlines lost our luggage and it was stuck in toronto and then we had to wait for another delta airlines flight God damn it, Delta Airlines. I, I don't know what's worse, you know, like being stuck in Minnesota or having your luggage stuck in Toronto. What, was it Pearson Airport? I don't know. I'm going to I assume it was useful. For the plot, I'm going to assume it's Pearson Airport. And that's like the worst place you can be. Like the worst, literally, I think the worst ranked airport in the world. <laughs> but also that takes me back a little bit because... Um, my dad and I are, like, big football fans. Mm -hmm. So one year we went to the CFL Grey Cup in Hamilton, the last one. And uh, it was interesting because it's a lot of drunk old people in the hotel, right? Oh, dear viewers. Yeah. So I think at 3 in the morning one night, I think, yeah, 3 in the morning one night, oxymoron, but... That's what they call me, the oxymoron. Uh, I hate myself. And it was, yeah, so uh, there was, at three in the morning, there's a random fire alarm. And my dad and I wake up and we're just like, oh, fuck. And we get outside and we don't even know if there was an actual fire. Mm -hmm. If it was, it was probably caused by a drunk old person. If there wasn't, it was probably a drunk old person blowing fire alarm, you know? Which, on the note of fire alarms, sorry, I have a lot of weird stories that slowly connect, that, like, have a very loose connection. I remember, this is another Queen's Homecoming story. One night, someone pulled the fire alarm, of course, at the dorms. And I don't know why, but one of my friends, I think, just randomly gave me a condom. I know, that's funny. Me with a condom. So, anyways, uh, whenever you go back in, it's like a rush. Like a giant group of people just fucking charging. Run! It's a stab period! It's literally like that. And then, uh, but the, you have, they have to check your hands oh, to see, no. to see uh, if you've pulled the fire alarm because there will be a lot of ink on it, right? So I charge up, like, hella fast. Show them my hand. There's a condom in my hand. And they just, they blow it off. But I get back in and they're just like, there's a condom in my hand. <laughs> and I told my friends that and they just died of laughter. And I was just like, God damn it. I think it's just funny that you of all people were found in a closet. But then again, who am I talking? I have like five in my purse for like no fuck she Because <laughs> I went to health services because they've been trying to help me with a lot of my fucking health problems. Um, I'll just be sitting there and there's like the box of just free condoms and downs. And I'm like, you know, it'd be funny if I just kind of took some of these. <laughs> like, I'll just take Oh my them. God. I, yeah. I have gotten so many free ones while I've been here. It's, I remember. Give them to you. Exactly. You know, they give it out like Halloween candy. One day I remember um, I was in the A building and there was like a little bit of a PSA. Oh my God. Is this the one where you guys got the flip books? No, that wasn't it. This was a different one. Oh, joy. But it was a scenario where it's just like, okay, you listen to our PSA and we'll give you the condom, but also a cupcake with a dick on it. And I was just like, I was thinking to myself. Yeah, I wish I was there. That would have been cool. For real. And I was just like, what kind of person would say no to a cupcake with a dick on it? Someone with sanity, of course. But is that me? No. No, I lost my sanity ages ago. What? Boy. 
That reminds me of when I actually had the sex education talk in school. Uh-huh. Um, they sat, we were like, they would mix the grades. So it was me and the grade eight. And they sat us all down at tables and they had someone come in and talk about it. And like, you explain a condom, put it on a banana, you know, the whole shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, that's not where the story ends, folks. Because they're like, now we have a lot of contraceptives. So each one of you is going to get in a group. And we're going to have you do a tiny presentation on each contraceptive. But then, what? <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> but what's really funny is there was like a couple groups, and they were like mixed, like girls and guys. But there was one group of all guys, and you'd think that they'd be smart and give the guys, you know, the condom, the thing they use. No, they gave this entire group of guys an IUD. <laughs> an IUD. <laughs> That's and and my group got the condom, which was all girls. <laughs> So, like, you just have to imagine these, like, middle school boys trying to present what an IUD was with a straight face. No, I'd be giggled in, like, all of school. Right like, and, oh, my God, it was... Oh, oh, my God. And then, like, the next year we had to do a presentation on um, drugs and alcohol, like, addictive substances. And my friend and I were doing alcohol. And this is the same friend who I used to do really dumb shit with, and it was mainly us sitting at my house, like, making the stupidest presentation ever. Like, it was literally in our Google slides, it was just booze prez. And the, the picture was, like, Kermit getting drunk. You know? Oh, my God. And, like, it's very interesting when you have, like, a bunch of high schoolers having to talk about magic mushrooms and weed and alcohol and all that kind of... Wish I was there. <laughs> yeah, but what's even funnier is they're like, yeah, don't do drugs. Like, and that was funny because I think that was before weed became legal. But it's really funny now because when I was younger, I, I, I'm everything that I said I wouldn't be. When I was like, when I was 13, I was like, I don't like goth people, and I would never dress in revealing clothing, and I will never drink, and I will never swear, and I will never smoke weed. And I... <laughs> yeah, and now, um, that's, it's like, seven years later, I am I, com- I dress in complete goth clothing. I wear very revealing clothing. I, now that I am of legal age, I drink like a motherfucker. I smoke weed, and I've done edibles, so I've completely... If still two year old me saw me, they'd be like, oh my god, what the fuck is that? I would love to see, like, my past self's reaction to me. Not because I didn't say I'd do any of the fat stuff, but I'd just be like, wow, I am a disappointment. <laughs> no, no, mine would just be like, oh my god, there's a fucking slut over there, what the fudge? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was an asshole when I was a like, kid. Like, I wasn't, I will admit... Um, I wasn't the worst, but I certainly was not the nicest person when I was younger. I have done and said a lot of, like, nasty shit about people that I 100% would not say today. Like, definitely. But, like, the thing is, is, like, I'm not gonna, like, completely dismiss it because I was a kid, but, like, yeah. I had, like, a, like I actually, I recently came across one of my old high school pictures Mm. Like, with all the people. And, like, for some reason, I'm, like, a person who, like, crosses people's faces out when I don't like them. Okay. But the thing is, I went, I because I was cleaning my room, and I found it, and I was, like, I was looking at it, I'm, like, oh. Like, this person, like, I look at the people with the crossed out face, I'm, like, this person didn't do anything to me. This person didn't do anything to me. Why did I hate this person? Why did I hate that person? Like, because, sure. like, it doesn't, like, because some people, like, sure, they would say, like, one thing, or they associated with the person I didn't like, but they didn't do anything. Exactly. Like, sorry, I'm getting really deep on this, but it just... Don't worry. They kind of just hit me that, like, for some reason I got really vengeful about people when they didn't really do anything. And it's like, I kind of feel bad about it because it's like, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you look back on it and you're like, you weren't really as bad as I thought you were. And I'll, honestly, you're just, you were just me. Like, we were all just like you know, asshole kids who did asshole yeah. things. Like, none of us were nice. But, like, it, it's a good thing that you have, like hindsight mm-hmm. on that stuff and you know just thinking back on it like it, it's a mature thing to do for sure mm-hmm. yeah. it is just because i look back on like the kids i knew in middle school the kids i knew in high school and it's like yeah. not like some of you weren't good people like some of you were genuine assholes and you did do genuinely horrible things but like for the most part a lot of people were just 
grumpy hormonal teenagers that like didn't really understand like the consequences of their actions or words i was one of them i definitely say with me for sure did i ever tell you about the time i exit i told i told a girl she looked pregnant and thought it was a compliment um i'll admit that i you can tell that one but i think uh we're approaching uh, we just passed 45 minutes so we could probably end off on i'll make that brief um i was a very dumb kid who thought telling a girl that <laughs> that, that told a girl she looked pregnant thinking that that was like a compliment <laughs> because i'm that fucking dense <laughs> i felt so bad afterwards like i still remember that and i just i remember just thinking like oh i'm so sorry that wow yeah that it... that's gonna be on the air forever but honestly that's fine i don't give a shit <laughs> who, who knows well to watch patrick just cut this episode yeah, there's a. Whenever you're editing this, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, Patrick. You know what? At the end of the day, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, too. And thank you again for coming on the show, of course. Thank you for having me. All right, then. And that will be all. Take care, everybody. Bye.